Um, and I've been asked to moderate this forum. It's a community forum to gather ideas for the future of the Elks Club property. It's not a night for making decisions. It's not a night for legal votes. It's not even a night to debate. Instead, it's a gathering night to brainstorm. Um, my background is as a professional is in public facilitation and I'm dedicated to public engagement and public process in service to each and all of you. And so uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from everyone and gathering as many different ideas from as many voices as possible so that this is a meaningful start to a deep public process around uh, a historic opportunity for the future of Montpelier. I'm just gonna take a second before I introduce Mayor Watson to walk through the agenda so we have a sense of the sequence and structure of tonight's meeting. We're in the welcome section. We're gonna go into some city information where, where uh, the mayor overviews where we are with the project in, in general and welcomes everyone to come together. And then Bill Frazier, the city manager and his staff will overview the process to date around the property, potential processes moving forward, information around rec services and the other uh, features of that could be part of the planning for the process, some basic financial information. Um, we'll then hear from folks from the hub who have a plan for a recreational facility that potentially could be part of this process there. Um, and hopefully Ethan Atkin is with us or someone else from that board will share uh, their overview. And then we'll stop for a minute and have time for questions and answers. And sometimes a question is more an observation than, it, than an answer. But we don't wanna spend the whole night just hearing from the city. We don't wanna um, spend the whole night um, just thinking about uh, the, what, what's already known. Instead, we wanna take time to think forward around what are some of the key features, what are the key values, key opportunities, and have those come from from all of us as, as citizens of Montpelier. So we'll have some brainstorming that gets into a discussion of the housing and the housing opportunities and some of what people would like to see in that regard, the recreational opportunities and potential provisions, the open space and what, what should that balance be and how do we preserve and protect things that are particularly important in the open space. And then an open time, about 15 minutes to hear your ideas and to gather perspectives that aren't on the table yet beyond those three areas. Then we'd like to take a, just a few minutes to say, what are some points of vision? And oh, I'll go through the yeah. process and ask people to lay a sentence on the table that could be part of a vision statement for the future of that property. And there's no right or wrong answers to any of this discussion tonight. We wanna to hear from everyone on all sides of the issues. And um, we, but we would love to gather some key points much of this will be brought back to you. We'll be taking close notes. The meeting's also being recorded for anyone who missed tonight and wants to watch it at another time. Um, we'll uh, adjourn at 8.30 sharp unless we get done early and we run out of things to say, but I'll be looking to each of you to, to think forward and put, put your card on the table for what could happen um, in regard to the, the space. Um, I wanna just now introduce Mayor Watson. Um, congratulations on your re-election, Ian, and we'd love to hear um, from you. Great. Thank you so much, Paul. So I want to thank all of you for being here, for taking time out of your day to share your thoughts with us. And that really is the point of this evening. Uh, the council uh, had this wonderful opportunity to uh, potentially purchase this land. And since that bond has passed, uh, we'll be uh, pursuing that. And with that, uh, we are just at the very beginning of what could possibly happen at this site. The, the council has recognized uh, priorities like housing, uh, recreation, uh, open space, uh, potentially even childcare uh, at this facility. Uh, but we didn't get into too much more detail than that because we want to hear from you. We want to hear how you all would uh, prioritize these things. Now, to be fair, tonight is is, as Paul said, it really is about uh, just getting a lot of ideas um, out on the table and hearing about what you all would like to see there. Um, and this really is, like I said, just the very beginning of the process and there will be um, uh, more opportunities moving on into the future for 
uh, you all, for the public to share the, continue to share their thoughts uh, with us and the council, especially as we um, learn more. Uh, and just for that, I also, I, I wanna thank Paul uh, for facilitating this evening. We're so grateful to have you here uh, with us uh, running this meeting. And I, I'm looking forward to, to stepping back for a change. Um, normally with council meetings, I'm, I'm facilitating those meetings, but I get to just listen. Uh, which I'm really excited about. And I'm excited to hear your thoughts. It's an opportunity to dream. Uh, and that is always um, really wonderfully fun. Uh, so I think that is, uh, that's it for me. And uh, next, I think I, I'm gonna turn it over, I think to Bill for a uh, for some further details. Uh, thank you, Mayor, appreciate it. Um... I uh, I would also say before I go into, I have a very quick presentation, like super quick, um, but thank everyone for turning out here. I know the Zoom format is uh, troubling uh, for some people, but you know, my computer says there are 124 participants. So that's pretty great. Um, you know, we don't always get that many in a room. So perhaps there's, there's pros and cons to this. Um, Mary, can I share my screen? You should be able to, yes. Okay, now if I can just figure out how to do it, um, that will be the next best thing, right? Um, what am I looking for? How do I find? Uh, if I click share, and I don't want that. Um, I'm sorry, folks, I, I will get this. <laughs> you are screen sharing. Um, I just need to find my file. Which is not, here we go. Oh, shoot. All right, I think I'm getting there. Okay. I think this is it, yes. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, so tonight is our first public forum of hopefully many uh, discussing the 203 Country Club Lane, the location of the former Elks Club uh, and golf course. Let's see. So tonight, the project that we're going to be talking about, the city is going to purchase 138 acres of land and the existing buildings at the 203 Country Club property. Uh, the city government, along with you, the public, will pursue housing, rec, open space, and other, as you've, you've heard described. So that's basically what we're here to talk about. Um, people have asked a lot about the price. We had the property appraised by O'Brien and Kaffenberger, an independent fee appraiser. They appraised the property at $2.93 million. Uh, we had our both our present, uh, our new assessor, Marty Lagerstadt, and our outgoing assessor, Steve Twombly, are both uh, experienced and licensed fee appraisers. We had them review the appraisal. They both agreed with the methodology, data, and conclusion. So the negotiated purchase price had been 3 million with 2 million coming from the recently approved bond and 1 million from the uh, uh, recreation reserve. And that is pretty much on point with the appraisal. Uh, so how did we get here? Uh, this is a lightning fast version of how we got here, but the, the group, the hub, who you will hear from, uh, presented their concept to the city about uh, using this property for a uh, recreation and a club and some other things. We agreed, uh, given the city's needs for recreation, we agreed that uh, it made sense to partner and not duplicate facilities or be in competition, but in fact, uh, work in a complementary manner. Uh, after reviewing that with the city council, we decided uh, together, the group, all of us decided that the property really uh, had more uses than just rec, although that was uh, what maybe drove us here, uh, that housing, open space, and others, childcare, as the mayor mentioned, were possible. And uh, that was something that we need to process. So ultimately the bond was proposed to, to the voters and passed a couple weeks ago. So what's gonna happen going forward? Uh, this forum is really kicking this off, uh, to, as Paul mentioned, to get ideas on the table from people, what they'd like to see, what you'd like to see. Um, we will be presenting, we staff led by the, our planning director will be presenting a formal process to the city council on 
uh, April 13. So not next week, but the, the meeting after that. Uh, but it will be a lot like, I think, the things that we're talking about. Tonight, we, so there will be a follow-up to this forum. Uh, we're going to capture the ideas. We're also going to put out, um, and we don't have the exact details of this yet, but very soon this week, uh, some sort of online feedback system where people can weigh in on not only what was said tonight, but add to the list of things so we can get a sense of, of priority. And then we will report out somehow um, back to the public, either with a follow-up meeting or uh, you know, reporting out uh, so that people know not only all the ideas that were shared, but what people had indicated as priorities. Obviously, there's technical work that has to happen, uh, geological, you know, where are the wetlands, where is the ledge, those kinds of things, analysis. So there is, a, I'm going a little fast, there is a public water and sewer at the site, but we do need to analyze its, its capacity uh, for various things. Obviously, a market for housing and those sorts of things. We need to identify partners. Uh, we certainly don't expect the city to do all of this on our own, particularly the housing component. That's not... Um, something we're strong at. So we would be looking for housing partners. Obviously the hub is a potential partner. Uh, and then we would uh, be thinking who else we need to work with for various aspects of the project. And all of this will have regular pu public check-ins to make sure that people know uh, what's going on and can make sure that to hear from you all as to are we on the right track. So talking quickly about recreation, just as we think of this conversation, and, and you're not limited to this, but we thought it might be helpful. In 2019, not that long ago, we did do a survey about recreation needs and desires, uh, in part because we were trying to decide whether we should be pursuing a new facility or renovating uh, the old uh, rec center on Barry Street. So the top five items that people indicated were a gym for basketball and pickleball, uh, you can see group cycling and spinning studio, a weight and cardio area, group exercise and dance room, and multi-purpose rooms. And then other items that got interest were sports lectures, health and wellness, education, music, arts, crafts, special interest classes, after school and child care, summer camp, and dance. So obviously we're interested in seeing, uh, do those still resonate with people? Or are there different things that people would like to say? Finally, we've been asked a little bit about our relationship with the hub. Uh, the hub is a private not-for-profit organization and they're looking to provide recreation opportunities for the community as well and plan to invest capital, private, um, privately raised capital into the property and programs. The city certainly supports the potential for collaboration, public-private collaboration at this site and the hub, hub representatives will speak next. So I don't wanna speak for them, but people have asked us about them, um, that's it. So in summary, um, I think you can think of it as sort of large to small, and this is where we're starting today. First, we wanna create a vision for what would go there. So what's the big picture? What are all the things we'd like to see? And then develop using uh, professionals, develop a plan that shows how that could happen, You know, where housing might go, where certain things might be, what an open space might look like. And again, all of this with public feedback. Um, then we would have to engage partners to make certain parts of it happen, so the housing, group might be one, the rec group might be another, and then implement it by its components. We don't have to bite this whole thing off at once. And I think recognizing that this is going to be a multiple year effort. This is not, you know, we're not going to have this all built out next summer. Uh, this is going to go on for a while as we, as we plan this thing. So this is a long-term, um, long-term planning and uh, developing effort. So that's the short version of what I have to say of how we got here, where we see ourselves going. And with that, I will turn it back to Paul and stop my share. Thanks so much, Bill. Is Ethan here from the hub or is someone else going to be representing the hub tonight? I am Paul, Nat Winthrop. Oh, hey, Nat. Good to, good to have you with us. You, you have the floor, Nat. Okay. Um, my name's Nat Winthrop. I'm vice chair of the hub board and a 40 year Montpelier residence with kids and grandkids who also live in Montpelier. The hub is a 501c7 nonprofit organization. Our mission is to provide vibrant, equitable and inclusive space for leisure activities and recreational programs to enhance and promote the social and physical well-being of the community. 
Our volunteer board of directors is made up of residents of Montpelier and surrounding communities. Central Vermont lacks a central family oriented recreational and social facility. There's a need for a facility that will offer recreational and social gathering opportunities that families and individuals of all ages can enjoy in an accessible, convenient, safe setting. Our vision is to meet these needs through the creation of a year round membership based social and recreational center servicing central Vermont communities. As a community space, we aim to serve individuals, families, seniors, school groups, and kids of all ages. We envision a net zero, aesthetically pleasing and sustainable facility that will include a social center with space for a restaurant and bar, after school educational and skills programs, childcare, and social events, including guest speakers, music, game nights, craft nights, public discussions, book clubs, storytelling, competitions, and more. We will also offer a spectrum of four season indoor and outdoor recreational activities, including racket sports, virtual and practice golf, mountain biking, bouldering and rock climbing, disc golf, bocce ball, horseshoes, and other facilities developed by the hub's members and the community. The hub has been in discussions with the present owners of the former Elks Club for the past year and a half about building our facility on their property. Over the past six months, we've been in discussions about a partnership with the city of Montpelier to collaborate on finding ways to both individually and jointly offer as many social and recreational opportunities as possible in response to community identified needs. We're excited about the opportunity to partner with the city to create a complementary cluster of recreational programs. The hub will invest substantial funds through donations, loans, and grants in developing our facilities over the next few years. As suggested by our name, we plan to be a vibrant focal point for community life in all its variety. The kind of asset that can attract businesses and families to the area, enhance our quality of life and be a lasting legacy in Montpelier. I and other board members who are on this Zoom are happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much, Nat. Great to have you with us and, and uh, really appreciate the intent that you have there to um, enrich the life of, of folks in, in Montpelier. Um, I'm gonna ask folks to uh, raise questions. We have a good period of time to do this. Um, both presentations were shorter than they might have been. And I'm going to ask you to, um, folks know how to use the, the raise hand function. You go to the bottom of your Zoom screen to reactions, click that, and it will give you the opportunity to hit the raise hand. And I will then see you up top um, in line and I will call on people in line. Um, I'm going to ask folks to uh, to be brief in your questions so that we can get you know as much uh, information on the table as we can um, to share if you have an observation rather than a question. Oftentimes people ask a question when they really want to tell you something. <laughs> That's okay too. But again, be brief. we we'd love to have it uh, comments stay under two minutes. Remember, everything is being recorded that all ideas are also being captured by a scribe so that this meeting is really a foundation stone to the future thinking with the community and it will be iterated back to you. You will hear 
back the ideas that hit the table in this meeting, and we're not judging those ideas tonight in terms of what's in or out of the package of things that might happen. We're simply listening and gathering together. The other thing I would say is let's do this in the best spirit of civic democracy, and, and let's not uh, have a, a mindset where we already know the answer to a question so that we're not fully listening to something that may be put in a way that we disagree with when it started, but try to learn from each other about um, the key in the idea that might be useful in the long run to the larger project. Um, that said, uh, please raise hands if, if you will, and we'll um, take some questions and begin to think this through a little bit as a team. Um, I see Nancy Bruce has her hand raised. I'll ask you also to uh, make yourself visible when you speak so that everyone gets a, a feeling for you. Um, and you have the floor, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for facilitating. Thank you for the hub and all the beautiful, amazing, what you're offering to the community. I just, my question is um, when the, the rec survey in 2019 happened, I would I would be really curious if there was a cross section of um, city members that participated in that. Um, I worry that perhaps that survey reflects um, just one portion or of our community, and um, I think that there are many many who want to participate and have opinions, but don't have an entry point. So thank you. Thank you, Nancy. So make you like sure Nancy? That... Yeah, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, Nancy, I don't have the, um, the data right here in front of me, but we had 513 respondents to that and it was done in a random survey type. It wasn't a volunteer survey, but I can get more of the specifics on that. Um, and there were a whole series of questions, including how much are you willing to spend and those kind of things. Having said that, I think the reason I put them out there was we're not wedded to those outcomes. That was just what people said three years ago were top priorities. Part of this process is to hear what people think are, are, are the priorities now. Okay. Yeah. And can I? Do yeah, I still briefly. Have the yeah. Bri um, thank you, Bill. And 500 people, uh, I don't feel represents the entire uh, socioeconomic level of our community and their, and their needs. So um, I guess I would just offer and ask, is there a way to capture that beyond that, this survey? Thank you. Well, we'll certainly, we'll certainly try. Um, and, you know, and I know we don't, I, we don't want to belabor this, but it's a point that I think other people share, you know, 500 people in a community of our size is actually considered pretty significantly, statistically significant. When you think about national polls, they polled about a thousand people. Uh, so that was a pretty good turnout. Obviously we don't know who all the, the respondents were, but we, we are always trying to reach out. So we'll keep working on that. And Thank you, Bill. On being, the point on being inclusive in the future of the outreach is one that we'll ask the scribe to know. Uh, John Snell. You're muted, John. Thank you, Paul and and uh, Mayor and and Bill for uh, uh, pulling this together. It's very important. Uh, the question I have about the hub is short and sweet. I didn't hear mention of a swimming pool, and that has been rumored around. What's true about a pool at the hub? Um, that is under discussion. Uh, however, due to the substantial costs of uh, including and well, what's been discussed is an outdoor pool, but even an outdoor pool is adds a lot of costs uh, to our project, uh, both in terms of capital costs and um, liability insurance, lifeguards, et cetera. It is something uh, many in our group would like to see in the long term, but um, it's not anything that we anticipate uh, building in the next uh, uh, three years or so. It would be longer term than that. Thank you. 
that. Uh, thanks, John. Uh, Esther, you have a question? You are unmuting, Esther? There you, there you go. It's, it's hard for me to say anything about it. And I wondered if you, at some time you would have a walk through the property because I, I don't know what's level, what's on a hill. And I, that would be really helpful to me if we could have a walk through sometime. That's a great idea. Um, I'll ask the scribe to put that in the idea bucket as well. Uh, but Bill, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, it's a great idea. I mean, obviously, if the weather was better, we'd be doing that now. And, and this meeting was set up. We've actually thought of doing a follow up meeting if we can figure out the, the a hybrid way to do it at that site. Um, but I also say that there are trails there now, cross country skiing, I think. So people can go up there and look around. I don't know how you know, just trudging in the snow, how inviting it is, but uh, certainly encourage people to take a look and, and we will uh, try to do that. Well, it's, it's, it's just hard to see what belongs to the Elks property and what belongs to someone else who, so that would be, you know, I'd really like to do that. Thank you, Esther. Um, I'm gonna ask Diane Sherman um, to, to raise her question. I, I know some people have been raising their hands sort of in the background. If you could go to the bottom of your screen to reactions and hit that, it will let you electronically raise your hand so you'll be in a line with people. Um, Diane, go ahead. Thank you. Um, my question is, I, my memory is that um, there was a, I don't know if there was the parks committee or commission or the whole city, but there, I thought there was a recreational survey done in the last year. And I was wondering if the results of that, do we have the results from that? And will that be taken into account um, in this process? So the, the most recent uh, rec survey that we have is from 2019. Uh, that's the one I was giving the data from a little bit at the beginning. Um, we'll make that whole thing available for people. Uh, Parks may have done an updated one. I'm not, you, and I'm not on top of that one. So we'd have to check on that, but certainly, any data that we have is important as well as what comes out of this process. Great, thank you. And I would recommend checking that out because it was fairly extensive from my memory. Thanks so much, Diane. Dee Dee Brush. You with us, Dee Dee? Dee Dee, you want to hit your video and Unmute yourself in the far left-hand corner. Mute and start video. Right. <laughs> My apologies, excuse me. Um, thank you all. Uh, I, I have three questions, which I think are pretty quick. So if, if they are not, cut me off. One sort of is similar to what Esther was suggesting, which is I'm not sure where the actual property lines are for the property. I've certainly skied there, walked there, uh, but I don't know what the 138 acres entails. So that's one question. It'd be nice to see a map. Mm -hmm. um, wonder also about the maintenance uh, relationship between the hub and the city. If the city is the owner of the property, uh, what will that look like? Who, who's responsible for what uh, as, as regards to maintenance of facilities and or property? And uh, the other thing I wanted to ask is, will Given all the uses that are being suggested for this property, will the cross-country skiing still be allowed and or um, accommodated? Thank you very much for those great and concise questions. Bill, you want to take them? Uh, yes, if I could remember them all. Uh, the, so the relationship with the hub is still being determined. So there will be a, some sort of lease agreement or you know some agreement that will determine who does what. So obviously maintenance and uh, responsibilities is is high on that list. Uh, second, second question. The third question is cross country skiing. I think the intention would be that it would remain uh, again, if that's something that people want, if, if, if it turns out that that's not a popular thing, which I suspect it would be, 
but the intent is to keep a lot of open space trails uh, and those kind of things. And there was a third one in there. The other one oh. is, do, do you have a map of the property, Bill? That yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get a map posted, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dee. Callie. Yes, um, here we go. Where am I? Am I on? Yeah, okay. Yeah, good. Um, so I, I just have a, I'm trying to wrap my head around um, probably playing catch up in terms of how this is somewhat structured. Has the has it been determined that the hub is in charge of the recreation section of, of this property or of this project, I should say? Uh, no, um, the, hub has, the, the hub has presented an idea that they would like to do a private, um, you know, well, you heard, you heard Nat describe what they right. like to do. And so the idea is that is still being discussed is that if the city were going to build expanded facilities that we don't step on each other's toes. So for example, I'll just, you know, say they build a tennis court, an indoor oh. tennis court. City wouldn't build an indoor tennis court. We'd work on an arrangement where we could lease time or, you know, have oh. time for the public, so that there would be there would be a, a public city recreation facility and hub facilities. And the idea was that we would figure out ways to work together, so we are maximizing the investment and making sure uh, that that it would all all work. So you know, city people that go to use the city facilities could go to the restaurant at the hub, for instance, or whatever. So the, those details aren't final, but the idea is that they would control. The entire rec thing they would control their property but that would be done in partnership with the city to make sure we have complementary uses okay so if if i have a moment for a follow-up so yes. so the hub owns a part of this property uh, already no or no the hub doesn't own anything the hub, okay. the, hub so the hub had approached the prior owner about mm -hmm. possibly doing this and in the course of conversation, it made sense for the city to speak with them because we were we also have a need for recreation facilities and it seemed like a good way. And then as this got talking, the, the, as those conversations pursued, it became obvious that this site could be used for a lot of things, including housing and other open space. So it said, all right, may, it probably makes the most sense for the city to purchase this and then do just what we're doing and plan what's forward. So, so there's no commitment with the hub yet. They don't own anything yet, but they have been, but I don't say that to cut them out either. They've been, they kind of initiated this. And so we see the opportunity to, to have a partner, but right now they have so, no. So they are the major voice of the recreation. Um, well, for some portion, of this. Yeah. it would be a city so, portion as well. I want to keep moving. And, and right. obviously we're having this meeting because there may be ideas that aren't part of the hub um, that the community wants to see happen. Um, and so there's opportunities. Um, this is the beginning of the conversation of opportunities. So I'm gonna ask folks to go quickly. We've got several people who wanna speak and we're, we only have a few minutes. So I'm gonna to go to Rob really briefly. Rob Goodwin. Oh yes, not here. I didn't think I was the on so quickly. Uh, so <clears throat> thank you. Um, so yeah. My name is Rob Goodwin. I'm um, speaking here on behalf of myself. Uh, I will say that I am the chair of the Montpelier Development Review Board, but uh, here speaking as myself uh, this evening. And, um, you know, I just wanted to sort of make the comment on here that I really implore everyone on this call to participate in this process, ever take every up public opportunity uh, and realize that uh, now is the time where you can really have an impact on what gets done with this property and, um, you know, have a real, real say and real vision about what sort of development we see in the city. And uh, now is the time not to, you know, maybe ask questions about what's been decided and what's there. Now is the time where your ideas can become a reality. Um, and um, I think this is an exciting opportunity for the city. And uh, I want to thank everyone for, um, you know, pulling this together and just implore continued involvement in uh, the public process here um, and also the public process around the planning and all development projects in the city, um, which is very important and integral to uh, uh, the success of these projects. So thank, thank you very much. Rob. Okay, Gretchen, um, your question. Hi, I have a question that's a follow-up from when I watched the November presentations at the city council meeting. Um, I saw the hubs presentation and I saw, also saw the rec department's presentation 
And um, I, I'm not expecting the city to answer this now, but I would really appreciate more information about more granular information about the pros and cons of citing some of this at um, the pool, the current outdoor pool place. Um, there's a bid out right now to renovate that building. And I've often wondered why that building, which we already own and is already a structure, is unused for three quarters of the year. And so I'm thinking about the relative value of citing these places in different parts of the city. And that's an important part of the decision from my perspective. So again, I don't expect it to be answered here. I'd just like to have more access to that information. That's great. Thank you, Gretchen. Uh, any quick comment, Bill, before we keep going? Makes sense. Yeah, good question. Yeah, okay. Uh, Jody Peter Peterson. Hi, thank you. Um, my question is, would the hub be paying taxes to the city of Montpelier? Um, so, <laughs> I appreciate everyone going into a lot of detail on the relationship with the hub. I would say, again, it's very um, new. So probably if they did not own the property, they would not be paying taxes, but they would probably be paying lease um, because if we're the property owner, we would be their landlord. Uh, so there would be some relation unless they were providing public services in lieu of that. So if they gave us free tennis court time, you know, so there would be public value exchanged for their use of public land. Then we'll go to Sarah Hoffmeyer for the last question. There. Um, I was wondering if uh, when we're in these early stages of planning, if there has been an economic impact study that's been done with Montpelier. I know I'm all about residents getting the uh, benefits, but also thinking about our tourism and what sports, what activities are going to draw in the most amount of dollars for our businesses. I know Blueberry Lake had a trail users um, study that was done not long ago. Uh, Vermont Trail and Greenways also had an economic impact study. So one, one similar to that. And uh, just real quick, Diane, to your question, Montpelier Alive did do a, a recreational survey just this past year. Um, so Dan Groberg, I know um, there were like 1500 people that responded to that. So you weren't wrong. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> So just quickly to answer that question, um, we actually are doing an economic development strategic plan update this year, um, in partly in, in conjunction with that. Um, we've also done a little bit of research on the impact of outdoor recreation and one of the council strategic goals uh, this year. In fact, I meant to talk about uh, the strategic plan, but I won't, uh, but was to sort of position Montpelier to be an outdoor recreation destination. And so we do think that, you know, creating opportunities for outdoor recreation here would add to that along with the Hubbard Park and the mountain bike trails and all those kinds of things. We want more amenity to draw people. Great, thank you. A great set of questions. It looks like Kathy wants to ask a question. I'm gonna let you have the last shot, Kathy, before we go on to people sharing their ideas, but go ahead. Thanks, I really appreciate that because I'm really curious. Um, the two names I've heard associated with the hub are Nat, who we just met, Nat Winthrop and Ethan Atkins. And when I go to the hub, dot, you know, org, vt.org, the website, there's just like three or four paragraphs on there and there's no names listed. And in one of the articles I read about donating to the hub, the donation went through the month Pillar Foundation. So I'm curious if the board of directors that we heard about is William Cody, Ed Flanagan, Karen Freeman, J. Paul Giuliani, Tom Galanka, Tim Heaney, John Holler, Sarah Robson Jarvis, Koya Moisher, and Jean Olson. Are those the 10 people who are on the, um, the hub's board of directors? Thank you. No, those, those aren't. Uh, that's not our board. Uh, Ethan Atkin is the chair. I am the vice chair. Lynn Cease, who is uh, on this Zoom, is the secretary. Um, and uh, I could mention the others. Um, I apologize for the skeletal nature of our website, which is, by the way, thehubvt.org. Um, within the next week, we will list all of our directors on that website, and we will have uh, answers to frequently asked questions. Uh, we'll also post some articles that have appeared. 
um, and uh, two or three other things. So uh, we were waiting for a meeting we had just, um, when was that? Uh, last week, last uh, Friday with uh, Bill and um, other department heads mm. at City Hall. And we were waiting uh, to make sure we were on track with them, which it appears that we are, to uh, you know roll out uh, more information on our website. I, I'd anticipate that within a week, uh, there'll be a lot more information on our website. Um, I see there's still people who would like to ask questions and we really wanna move on to gathering input, not just having um, information, but I, I'd, I'd entertain a couple more if you can be brief and we can have short responses from people. Susan, are you all set or did you speak? I'm sorry, I can't. Susan Labarth. Hi. Okay, um, do you have a quick, quick question? Kathy asked uh, the first question that I had um, but uh, in terms of going forward, um, it would be important to me to have those doing the planning um, exhibit some expertise in the areas of, I don't know whether it's community planning, facilities planning, um, that sort of thing. And, and that was, well, that was one of the questions I had about the people uh, who belong to the hub, whether they have that, whether the city has that whether we plan to engage that sort of thing. Um, let's, stop, let's stop there. Bill, do you have an answer for that one? Yeah, we absolutely intend to engage people um, with technical expertise in addition to the city's planning and our, our staff. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Norman? Yes, a quick question. I was wondering if there's consideration for affordable housing on the property. Um, there's interest and we're going to actually talk about that right next and we're going to gather people's thoughts on what the best sorts of housing should be that should be on the property. So we'll get right back to that, Norman, okay? Um, and Andrea, really quickly. Yeah, thanks, Paul. I appreciate it. Um, I have a, a, a concern that I'd like to flag for the city as they go forward with the project, which is this is historically a golf, a golf club, um, a golf course. And if things like recreation and childcare and other kinds of activities are on the table, I think we need to look very seriously at the condition of the soil and the past history use of pesticides in that area um, to be sure that we're, and, and housing certainly, that we're not getting involved in something that could be incredibly toxic uh, for the okay. people who live and play there. And one other quick thing that I just wanna note for everybody is that a 501c7 organization as designated by the IRS is a social organization that is a membership group. And in order to achieve tax exempt status with the feds, they have to be limiting their membership. Thank you. Um, I, I think a lot of this, a, a lot of further information will come into us being able to say what we think <laughs> underneath. We have really an hour in our agenda around brainstorming around property uses. So, you know, uh, Andrea's comment that you need to make sure that the land is ecologically sound before you start having children to play area on it and so forth. You know, we can really lay out some of those think those thoughts in a way that the scribe gathers as points of public interest in moving things forward. So I'm going to turn now to the, in our agenda, we're a few minutes late for it, beginning to brainstorm property uses. And the first one is around housing. So we've, what we've got is 15 minutes to talk about housing, 15 minutes to talk about recreation, 15 minutes to talk about open space, and then, to, and then 15 minutes to talk in an open way about any other ideas that you have for the future of the property that you wanna kind of lock into the thinking at the very beginning of the process. And um, if, you've, if you wanted to ask a question, uh, try to turn your question into an affirmative statement of what you think should happen. <laughs> and that will drop into the notes for the meeting, okay? Um, Margaret, do you wanna to speak to the housing question? 
Uh, well, that was a uh, I, that was what the topic I wanted to bring up: uh, affordable housing, and uh, in light of the governors and others wanting more to attract more young families to the this area. So affordable uh, housing. Affordable housing should be a priority. Great. Thank you so much, Margaret. Catherine? You're still muted, Catherine. Oh, my particular interest, of course, is in the um, natural resources and the uh, climate resilience and environmental planning process. And I'm wondering what, how this will, will there be an organization where all these many aspects of planning will be coordinated and who, how, how might that happen? So the, the planning for all these different features should be coordinated. Um, Deborah Messing, you're not, there you go, thank you. Um, th these things need to be coordinated together. Thanks for that point. Esther? Uh, you're still muted, Esther. Esther, you're on mute. Would, would it be rental housing or would it be ownership housing? Tonight, in this part of the meeting, we, no one has that answer. What would you propose, Esther? You're muted again. Okay, I, I think a, a mix would be would be. Um, I, I would propose that. If okay. Ask me. Okay. Thank you so much. I see Rick DeAngelis is on the phone. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Paul, and hello, fellow citizens. Good to be here. Great discussion. I just want to underscore the uh, importance of affordable housing. And, you know, I've worked in housing my whole career and um, an opportunity like this does not come along every day. It's really a, a generational opportunity to build the diversity and vitality and fairness of our city. So uh, I'm all for putting, you know, recreation's great, but I'd love to have some affordable housing there. And I have a very specific idea I'd like to put in the idea box and, uh, you know, I work for the Good Samaritan Haven, and we've got a real problem with homelessness uh, in our town and in our region. And I'd like to suggest that whatever housing that we do there, that we have a um, target that at least 25% uh, of that housing uh, be targeted to people who are experiencing homelessness. And you know, right now we're at a moment in time that the, the resources are there to help make that happen, um, to, uh, uh, to provide the services and the support and good quality housing that can help those people get a, new, uh, a second chance. So I'll leave it at that. And uh, thank you everybody for all your energy and great ideas. Thank you, Rick, and thanks for all that you're doing. Um, John Snell. Yes, as a formerly uh, in my other life as a housing expert, uh, particularly with energy, I would love to see these buildings that are constructed be uh, energy neutral, uh, net, net zero, and a mix of housing types so that we have not only rental and purchased, but uh, multi-unit as well as single and uh, duplex type housing. Terrific, thank you, John. Um, Zachariah Watson. Hey, Paul. Uh, yes, uh, Zachariah Watson, and uh, joining me here is Peter. And um, I, um, I uh, just want to make a plug for uh, what uh, actually what John just said is uh, a mix of housing um, and um, specifically creating opportunities for affordable home ownership as well. Um, those are my recommendations. Affordable home ownership as well. Thank you so much, Zachariah. Uh, Vicki Ann? There. Um, I, I'm concerned about the term affordable housing because I've seen a lot of numbers tossed around as to what affordable housing really is. And uh, 
I'd like to explore uh, that, that the housing be really affordable and not someone who's well housed version of affordable. Um, because some of the numbers that I've seen, you know, bandied about as, as affordable housing seem like they're totally off the wall and out of the um, out of the out of sight for the majority of people. Um, so so um, that's my concern. Okay. If we're going to have affordable housing, let's have real affordable housing. Great, thank you for sharing that, Vicky. Uh, Carolyn Grodinski. Hi, Carolyn. I have dogs barking right now. Um, I just wanted to say with all the um, issues with uh, congestion in town, I would suggest at the same time that any project goes forward with housing or uh, the rec center that we're looking at public transportation, connecting with Cross Vermont Trail and the bike path and everything to get people out of single family cars. Great, thank you so much, Carolyn. That should be a systems issue in, in the whole design here, huh? Um, Nancy Bruce. How was that? Hi, Nancy. You're there you Hi, go. yeah, Paul. Thank you. You're doing a great job. What a hard night, um, but a good night. So housing. We're talking about housing, right? Yes. And Carolyn, you're still. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, Nancy. So we want to create all these beautiful recreation facilities where we don't have people to come and live here. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to go back to my previous statement about we are not getting the needs. We have a small population of people involved in government right now and talking about these things. And so with housing, I think that, you know, an indoor pool, all these things, we have to, we have to house the people that want to be here, Vermonters that want to stay here. Thank you so much, Nancy. Sean Sheehan. Sean. Hey, Paul. Hey, everyone. Um, yeah, great, great event. I on the housing, I just want to echo, I think, what's been said on the uh, diversity of housing, um, I think in terms of both rental and, and ownership, uh, but, but also, I think, in terms of multifamily homes and, and density of homes, which I think feeds into what's been, been said. I think in, in Vermont, um, you know, we, we're so heavily um, single family homes. And, um, and I think, as Bill and others have pointed out, usually when things go to a developer, I think I saw last year, 80% of Across the country or more single family homes. So I think as, as others have said, this is a great opportunity to do multifamily housing. Also, um, great articles in Fast Company in New York Times about intergenerational housing. I think as we get older and also want to attract young people, there's some great initiatives being done across the world. Um, be happy to share those articles to add to the, the record for the um, for the night of really where there can be at development and I think it feeds off of the trails, the recreation. I think what we're talking about really can add to that, add to the grand list, um, have more affordable housing in the sense of at least being relative, you know, having a small yeah. home is gonna be affordable relative to a large home. Um, excellent, so. excellent, Sean. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut you off because you're a friend really? of mine. I can do it publicly without <laughs> <You> can, <yeah. laughs> Thanks. Uh, but Thanks, but uh but um if, if you want to send articles or thoughts, you can send to msmith at montpelier-vt.org. We're going to be gathering materials to make as much of this input as we possibly can. And we'll repeat that at the end of the night. So I'm going to ask folks to go quickly. There's a lot of people who are lined up. Amanda Carlson. Hi, Amanda. Hi there. Good evening. Uh, thanks for hosting this wonderful community event. It's great to see uh an evolution of all the conversation that was happening on Front Porch Forum. Uh, quick comment about transportation, totally second Carolyn's uh, suggestion to really think about public transportation and maybe even a devoted transit route going up there frequently. And then also if the city's taking out a large bond 
to invest in housing, maybe consider buying a fleet of shared vehicles if we're installing a big housing development. And um, that's my idea. Thanks. Thank you. Very creative. Brian Evans. Hello, everyone. Uh, I want to be just another voice in the chorus here. Uh, I'm looking for affordable housing, looking for housing for the, uh, the homeless. And I would also like to throw a note in there for um, senior housing as well. Um, would also like to see if we could possibly codify a percentage of any new uh, housing projects on the facility, uh, on the property to be affordable housing, if we could put that into code. So that's part of any negotiation with future developers. Thank you. Okay. We'll capture that idea, Brian. Thank you. Carolyn. And then Catherine. I want to uh, play off of uh, Brian's uh, comment about the housing for the elderly. I think in addition to that, uh, it should be handicapped accessible, that I see very few listings for uh, available housing that's on one floor and seniors have trouble with stairs as do handicapped people. Thank you so much for making sure that's in the record, Carolyn, we think about that. Catherine, and then Susan. Okay. Thanks for hosting this meeting tonight. Um, like to reiterate all of the interest in both affordable housing and a diversity of housing types. And also to reiterate the comment earlier around a new development of this scale being a great opportunity for low impact development or net zero development. And that would be really in line with uh, you know, broader city policies at this time too. So it's a real opportunity to do, uh, yes, a really fantastic work that other communities can learn from. Terrific. There's a lot of points here that should enter maybe a vision statement that we throw together some ideas around that at the end. So I hope people will stick around. Susan, you have the floor briefly. Uh, you're muted. I'm working on it. There you go. Um, I just, I would just reiterate what people were saying about public transit. I think it's going to be important to start that conversation soon. So, yeah. Okay. Because if you're going to house people, and you want to say, if you want it to be net zero, that's a big factor. Okay, we're going to turn, thank you so much. We're going to turn to recreation in a minute, but first we're going to have Jody, Didi, and then Amanda. So Jody, you have the floor. Hi, thank you. I just want to agree with everyone who's been talking about housing. This is my number one um, priority for this land. And I really would like to see a lot of effort go into figuring out how, how we can plan a really great community up there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Didi. Hi, um, thank you again. I, I had transportation as one of my questions, but people have already addressed that. It's very clear that if housing is, is a major com component there, as well as the idea of getting kids to recreation or daycare, transportation has to be a huge component. The other thing I wanted to say was that I wondered whether it is already considered that the residents of all of the housing would have affordable access to all the recreation facilities. Good comment to have in the record. Thank you so much, Didi. Um, Amanda. Amanda, are you waiting to speak? Uh, we can't see you or hear you, Amanda, yet. I'm going to call on Kathy until Amanda's clicked in. Kathy, briefly. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to invite us to really break out of old paradigms and try to think about new paradigms when we think about affordable housing. And in particular, one of the ideas to explore is that housing that's intended up front not to be like flipped and made a profit off of, but perhaps that like instead of giving the way, land away or selling it, it gets leased for people to, um, for some amount to build homes on and the people that live there can own the home, but mm -hmm. have a restricted amount of um, increase that they can gain as sort of profit over time. And so in that way, assure that the homes remain affordable, like per in perpetuity. Thank you. Great, great, thank you. Lisa Moody, and then Vicki, and then we're going to turn a corner. Lisa. How can I? Where's me? I'm right there. Lisa? Okay, there. Sorry. Um, talking about transportation, my one 
thought is that there's one entrance into the property now. I'm assuming there'll be thoughts about other ways to get in and out of the property or okay, that, it's gonna be rather congested. Great point. Thank you, Vicki Ann. Vicki Ann, are you? Sometimes I can't hear your, you talking. Okay. Um, yeah, like right now. But anyway, um, <laughs> my uh, <laughs> um, while we're talking about housing, I'd like us also to remember that um, that land up there is home to wildlife and let's try to preserve that. Thank you so much. Amanda, you get the last word. You were waiting, weren't you? But you're muted. You. There you go. Yes, I'm new to this whole Zoom thing. I've done it only a handful of times. Um, I just wanted to reiterate what Rick D'Angelo said, and that I think we need to really focus on affordable housing and not just affordable housing, but our homeless problem. Um, Thank you. Somewhere that all needs to come together. Okay. Um, I'm also concerned about rating the reserves of the rec center because there's not going to be a new rec center immediately and i would like to see budgets and balance sheets for the rec center and i don't know how to get to that well that's great point to make amanda and we're going to shift with that statement into the discussion on recreation where we have about 10 to 15 minutes to then we'll go to open space and other ideas so let's zero in on recreation and add to amanda's concern, do people have particular features that they would like to see? And again, we're not making decisions for what the hub does. We're making, um, we're, we're making, we're putting thoughts on the table for what we'd love to see. And the hub could be part of it. The city could be part of it as well. Um, so today's not the day to censor. It's to put, put our best thoughts forward on the table. And I see several people have raised their hands. I'm gonna ask people to go quickly. And I'm gonna start with Lucinda McLeod, go ahead. Hi, um, if it's going to be a multi-generational um, facility, I'd like to put in a strong word, even though it's expensive, for, a, for an indoor pool, because I think that's something that's really important for all ages. Um, I'm older and I think it's great when you can't do a lot of other things because of the low impact of water. It's good for little children to have lessons. It's good for water aerobics. So that is my priority. But I also wanted to put in a plug for my grandson. His mother may be here, but um, he wants a skateboard park. So I, okay. I am advocating for that for a 13 year old. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lucinda. I see Giovanna Peebles. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, as part of the recreation visioning, I really want to uh, emphasize public transportation. We've said it for the housing. I think everything we talk about has to be underpinned by public transportation and specifically electric vehicles, electric uh, little minivans, big big buses, we have to go electric with our public transportation and we absolutely need to put that front and center as we go forward in our in our planning and our vision. And thanks again, Paul, Thank everyone. you. Thank yep. you. Thank you, Giovanna. Um, and then I see Susan. I also think that we should be considering, several people mentioned the possibility of using the bike path to get to this facility. I think that if that is something people wish to consider, we need to think about how that path is maintained in the winter and how that path functions at night. Mm -hmm. So just kind of contemplate if that's gonna be a major way for people to get back and forth, upgrading it, thinking about how it works for people so that it is safe and functional all season. Great, great points to have on the table, thank you. Carolyn Grudinski. I might be talking with about the wrong group, but I just want it to be noted um, because I was a former parks commissioner and there's a whole green print that connects all the open spaces that every community has access to open space. This, it needs to be coordinated with the parks commission green print. Great, 
what a rich opportunity. Uh, is it Dari Darian? I'm sorry. Yeah, Darian, Darian McElwain. And I just want to just say tennis, 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 and tennis. I help coach my daughter's team at U32, and we have lots of friends at uh, Montpelier High School, and there's also kids at Spalding High School. And now that First and Fitness has switched, uh, those teams are no longer viable during the winter time. And, um, you know, before when they had that available, it really brought those kids together and really helped the sports. Um, so I'm just, just want to give my plug for tennis. Okay. Thank you so much, Darian. Nancy Bruce. Look. You're still muted. There you go. Thank you. Uh, hey. Hi. Friends, it's so great to, to see everyone. So um, I just, around recreation, which growing up, it was easily available, but I want to point out that and say that we have a climate change crisis and that what our children need is not a skate park or a pool because we have rivers and streams and ponds and lakes. We need to make this land productive so that they can live there safely and comfortable. Do you have a particular thought about gardens or something else, Nancy, that should be in, the, in that land or in the planning of the process? Yeah, there should be lots of housing, lots of housing. And oh, okay. Okay, um, John Snell. Thank you, John. Yes, thanks. One thing that's gone unspoken thus far, and I think it's important to step back and say it, is that this land is unceded land to us even though we're buying it from somebody who bought it before and so on and so forth, there were people who lived on this land hundreds of years ago and still have, uh, we need to honor that. Thank you so much, John. Uh, any last thing, burning thought around recreation that hasn't been said, knowing that, again, that we're at the open mouth of the funnel and that a lot of these ideas have been batted around and could conceivably come together around this project. Anything we might be missing? Catherine. Hi there. Um, an idea that I'd like to yeah, have on the record is, you know, um, obviously the recreational planning will be a part of, uh, you know, citywide master planning and consideration of the location of other facilities. Um, knowing that the downtown rec center is likely to close, I'd hope the master planning would consider, you know, which activities are really best suited to downtown and thinking about, you know, if, if there's a new center on this site, you know, does it have all of the types of recreational activities, you know, for the, much of the stuff that happens indoors, let think about whether there's a suitable site downtown for some of that smaller scale indoor stuff that doesn't need to be on a, a bigger site uh, like the one we're talking about. Great. Thank you, Catherine. Think of the system and where the different functions belong. And um, that's terrific. I see uh, Vicki Ann and Dee Dee again. I'm, I'm hesitant to give you guys another chance before we've heard from everybody, but I, I will. Um, but I'll ask folks that haven't spoken around open space to be thinking about that because we're going to turn to that in about one minute. Vicki Ann. I just want to make sure that whatever recreation is up there, that it is affordable to people with very limited means. Terrific, thank you. Um, I see Brad is here, Brad. Yes, uh, Brad Watson. Um, I've lived here since 1997, been involved in a lot of the rec programs in Montpelier, a lot of the youth programs. And I think what I've seen in this community is antiquated facilities um, when I first moved here, we 
participated in fundraising and, and built the Center Vermont Memorial Civic Center. But I really can only point my finger at that facility as something new that we built for the for recreation for the kids of Center Vermont. And I think we have a real opportunity recreation wise uh, to uh, build facilities that are going to be all inclusive, that we have to be um, mindful of what what the demographics of our, our community is and what, what people like to do, whether it's a Frisbee golf course, a tennis court, uh, a golf course, uh, a roller skate uh, or skateboarding track, but I really want to see us be thoughtful about recreation. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Brad. Elizabeth. Uh, you're muted. Hi. Hi. Good. Uh, um, thanks to Paul and thanks to the, the city for arranging this um, meeting that is a bit like being at the at the fire hydrant um, full blast. And what's occurring to me is that <laughs> we have a lot, a lot, a lot of good ideas. And uh, we, I, I, I sort of think about placing those good ideas on the property and suddenly realize that, well, we don't know much about the property. We don't know what its carrying capacity is. Um, we know where it is, but we don't know what it is. And um, I think that it would be helpful to um, conduct a, a site analysis, an in-depth site analysis and find out more about where the bedrock is, um, what the soil can carry and so on, and how we can um, assess this site's buildability uh, and convenience for people against the buildability and convenience of property that we have closer to the downtown. So a site analysis and, a, and um, a, an analysis of the pros and cons of other properties that could be in play. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, I want to turn to Peter Cohn. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to riff off of what Brad just said um, and just turn the attention to the fact that um, recreation is absolutely an attractor to an area. So housing, definitely necessary, and we need to have places for people to live. But having adequate recreation facilities will also draw in more people, particularly people with younger uh, children and families that will uh, kind of put roots down here and then continue to grow and be a part of the community. So I'd hope to see um, maybe some outdoor fields some bigger space in addition to any indoor stuff, but definitely look at it as a way as to attract people that we want in our community as well. Great. Hey, thank you, Peter. Um, let's turn a corner again. And all these things interrelate, obviously, where housing goes connects to re recreation. Both of these connect to the open space that's there. And we've heard people say, it's really important to consider the wildlife corridor. And we've, we've heard people say, where is it? Where's the boundaries of this space? How does it connect neighborhood? How does it connect to transportation? How does it connect to the bike path? So um, as we think about it as an open space for the future, are there particular values or particular things we would wanna preserve, protect, or enhance um, around the open space that's available there for the future of the community? Maybe this one's a little more abstract, but we'd love to hear anyone's thoughts about this. We'll start with Callie. Um, hi, um, I was gonna talk in the next section, but in terms of open space, um, I, I'm steward of a forest that abuts this property. Oh. And so when I think about open space, I think about what the impact of that will have on my forest. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think about landscaping. I mean, my forest, a good portion of my forest has already been decimated by invasive species. Mm -hmm. And um, my forester and the county forester, we've been scratching our heads for years about what to do. So in terms of open space, I would love to see it 
wilded. 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 Um, <laughs> let it go. Yeah, great. <laughs> let it, Thank let you. It, since, since, oh, can I say one quick, one more thing? Quickly. Quickly. Okay. Um, since my property is wild and kept wild, um, I think the opportunities for, for people to be a part of a wilded land is, is important. Thank you so much. Elizabeth Robichek. You're muted. Not as in, it's been very often. Um, my background is in landscape architecture. I'm now retired, but um, this is a the kind of project uh, I often had chances to. And so what I'm hearing tonight um, is the vestiges of what we call a big idea. And at some point, a big idea will get formulated. One of the things I'm excited about what I'm hearing is the level of equity and diversity that could be brought there, including the wild. In my work, I always listen for the story of the land as well as the story of the people. So one of the things I wanna point out, and this maybe is in the next section, is the difficulty of uh, getting the opinions of some parts of the population. They actually have to be sought out rather than expecting them to show up on surveys. And, and so this could become a model uh, living uh, exercising um, project that's a model for how we deal with climate change and diversity and equity and wildness and um, transport. And it's the big idea I see forming is a model to uh, other places that um, may have a harder time pulling it together. That's great. That's a great vision point. So come back to that one. Um, Susan, and then, then Fran Dodd. I would like to find out what the Montpelier Tree Board has to say about what might happen on that property and also think about food. Um, I know that there's a lot going on at Two Rivers Center. So I, you know, I know there's, I don't know what the ground is like. I mean, I think mm -hmm. we have to find out what it's, whether it's safe, but mm -hmm. permaculture comes to mind. Yes, thank you, Susan. And how does that connect with what's going on across the street there at the right. former Two Rivers land? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Fran Dodd and then Elizabeth. Fran, are you with us? Uh, let's see, uh, sorry, I have to turn those both on. Um, Thinking about the attractiveness for tourists as well as for a wide variety of housing, I think it would be ideal if in placing the housing, if it's done in such a way that there's some of the aesthetics of the property that is preserved so that it will be attractive both for those who live there and for those in the rest of the community, as well as for the broader public that we might want to attract to the area. Oh, I'll leave it at that for the moment. Yeah. Thank um, you very much. Elizabeth Parker and then Charlie Dickinson will be next. Dickerson. Elizabeth. Yeah. Oops, getting there, hi. Um, so I just wanted to talk about uh, the uh, intersectionality of having public transit and car shares uh, for the uh, residential members who might live in this area in this on this property uh, to reduce the amount of parking lots that would be there. Uh, hopefully the parking lots would be permeable uh, and uh, that there's a lot of focus now on um, on as uh, Susan was saying earlier on permaculture and on siting the buildings in such a way that there are, uh, you know, edible gardens around the uh, around those uh, areas, and could very well uh, also be around any recreational facilities that are there. So, an emphasis on um, gardens and community gardens. There's uh, um, not enough here in Montpelier, so it'd be a great resource. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charlie. I need to make one quick pitch. Since yeah. we're on the topic of open space, can we consider having it a dog-free zone? I, I have quit using Hubbard Park, North Branch Park, 
Blanchard Park, the riding trails, walking paths, because they're all full of dogs. It's one thing to have a dog park. It's another thing to have every park a dog park. So if we keep open spaces up there at the Oaks Club and we don't turn it into a golf course, actually make a pretty good golf course, <laughs> uh, yeah. please make it a dog-free zone so some of us can enjoy it. Thank you for putting that on the table, Charlie. Um, Watson, I see a W. Watson. Hi, Wendy Hi. Watson. Um, I would like to put a plug in for the city um, to put in an awesome sliding tubing hill for the children. I think it could really bring the community together. It's very affordable, fun, um, and there's a great space going up the hill that's safe. So I think that would be a great attractor for the community. Nice feature with everything else we're talking about. Thank you so much, Wendy. Vicki Ann Lane and then Mariah. Um, I would just like to remind everybody about the wildlife. And um, yes, the, the non-dog thing, um, although I don't know how you're going to do that with with residences because I mean, obviously people want pets, but especially since recently um, we've all heard about the dog that killed a deer um, and um, that's unacceptable. So we need to really, really pay attention to the wildlife and preserve that because as soon as we, you know, every time bulldozers come on land and remove trees and whatever habitat, you see a lot more wildlife killed on the roads. So we're squeezing them more and more. So we just need to learn how to um, respect their homes as well as create places for us. Thank you so much, Vicki Ann. Uh, Mariah, and then Amanda. Um, I disagree that that the dogs have a lot of places to go. A lot of the places in Montpelier are for walkers and there's always been a contention about, you know, where the dogs. Yeah, we're, we're not really going. trying to debate and no, make I'm decisions, just, but I'm do you have saying, an idea? Well, I'm just saying, I, I wonder if we couldn't have a, a dog, enclosed dog place for there because otherwise you're leaving, there's a lot of dogs in Montpelier owners. Of, and I just, what are you gonna do? Say so you can't buy a house because we wanna have our, deer protected and and so you can't have a dog you can't really discriminate like that there must be a, a solution to maybe have an enclosed dog park which we've been talking about for years something like that yeah thank you mariah so some finding that balance point solution uh, amanda and then Catherine. oh am i on mute you're you're on <laughs> okay um you know, I just want to reiterate what some people have said that we really, I think a lot of this is premature. It's great, great brainstorming, but I would like to see an actual survey of the property, um, an actual map of the property, where the property boundaries are, perhaps some sort of study on what, what lives on that property so that we can make sure to protect it. Um, that's it. <laughs> yes. Well, that's all. That's all great. Thank you so much, Amanda. Um, Catherine, and then Nancy Bruce. Hi there. Um, my daughter was interested on this topic. You want to share? Okay. Now she's a little nervous, but she could hear this and wanted to be sure that it was on the record that it'd be great to have a playground on the site. And Ka um, Catherine. That's really yeah. important. Catherine, what would you like to see in that playground? What do you what would you like to see in the playground? Swing, slide. Swings and slides. So all right. Those would be some really cool ideas. And I could also picture um, you know, there are a decent number of playgrounds in the area. So thinking what's unique about this site and making it a unique playground for this site. So maybe it's an adventure playground or seesaw. more seesaw. Yeah. Seesaws? Yeah, it could be more nature inspired if it's up against uh, 
the kind of recreational landscape. So, you know, this could be fun for a real engagement event with kids, uh, like drawing their ideas and stuff. Well, so thank you so much, Catherine, and, and your daughter. Your daughter is very important to all of us, and we appreciate her sharing her thoughts. Um, and, well, Nancy, this came right before bedtime, so thank you. Yeah. Oh, and her animals got something to say too. Um, Nancy Bruce. Uh, Paul, is there, so I, I don't feel that we captured all the needs of our beautiful little city or town. I feel like we have a small, se beautiful segment of thoughts about many amazing things. What I'm concerned about is that we haven't heard about the needs beyond this collective right here. and how we might uh, like Rick D DeAngelis, how we might get input from those on the ground who are it's serving great. the home. Yes, it's a great point. And we're really turning into other ideas. We have 15 minutes, Nancy, to talk about ideas that aren't part of housing per se or recreation or open space per se. You know, what else do we need to be thinking about? And it sounds like you're saying we need to think about an inclusive process that reaches out to people who might not come to a public meeting like this, but might, but whose voice and ideas need to be gathered. And is there more to it than that? Yeah, no. Well, yes. I mean, no, thank you. You're doing an amazing job. And thank you so much. I think, I think that 20 or 30 people, um, with ideas of plague, you know, all the beautiful ideas, but I think that there's um, other ideas. Yeah. So can we pull in, thank you, can we pull in our local nonprofits, our state agency that we pay our tax dollars to and that work so hard? Can we get their information about what, this community needs other than just this small group. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nancy. I, I know this is that the planning commission is going to be as, as, a, as Bill said, building up a, a framework for future planning that will engage a lot of those folks, but it's a good point to put on the table right now that, that, well, that, that larger input is important. I just want to go to Sally who's Robin, next. And then other and, and we've got um, till about 8.10 to, to think about things that haven't been said yet that really ought to be part of this picture. Before we start putting out points of vision that we would like to see in the site in the future, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, but Sally, go ahead, and then Linda. Um, I'm concerned about a couple of things. One is, um, and I hate to be the cynic about this, but if the Elks Club couldn't keep a sort of country club going, um, I'm not sure how or why the hub thinks it can, but I th think that the possibilities and the opportunities are huge. I'm concerned that if we create a whole new housing neighborhood of, of mixed and affordable rental and purchase housing, mm -hmm. that it's very distant from the schools. And to create a family oriented housing area that is quite distant from the schools is going to put some pressure on, on, um, on those very families that would like to live there. Mm -hmm. So I'm concerned. So the creation of a childcare center that is a model for the rest of the state, which the capital city ought to have in some form mm -hmm. um, is a possibility or the, the, and I'm also concerned about the duplication of existing services. You have an outdoor pool now. Mm -hmm. It needs some work and it does have a building that could use some work. And the mm -hmm. rec center I've always thought is, is an opportunity waiting to happen and it's accessible. It's walkable mm -hmm. for the majority of people in the town. So I'm concerned that there are a lot of, um, I, I'm concerned that, that we need to be careful that we don't spend a lot of money creating another city outside our city. And um, um, there we are. 
Yeah, well put, Sally. Thank you very much for sharing those perspectives. Uh, Linda, your thoughts on issues that aren't that really aren't under the other topics, but that are important to think about as we as we brainstorm future uses of the property. Hi. Um, one of the things that I found lacking in Montpelier is a good theater or musical venue. I don't know if that would fit into a, a building site like this, but I would love to see that. I think it would um, allow for the space to be used on um, evenings and would draw tourists into the area. Um, so just my thought. Great, thank you. Kelly. And then John Snell. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, the depth of what we're talking about here is extraordinary. And one of the things that I've been making notes about is how many different deep topics we have. It looks like we have seven. And so I would like to put forth the idea that, um, I don't know who's, I guess city council, create either committees or task forces that would look at each one of these issues. I could listen for you if you want, um, in depth so that the environmental piece would be looked at in depth with all of its uh, concerns, transportation, recreation, housing, infrastructure, budget, um, because that it just is, is too big. And that's mm -hmm. my idea. Great, thank you so much for sharing that, that thought on how things could proceed. John Snell. Thank you. Um, I think Sally does strike an interesting chord in that we could potentially be creating uh, a city within a city, if you will, a large, very viable neighborhood. We've done that in other places around the city as well. One thing that we've lost in the process are neighborhood groceries and services that, that can provide to a neighborhood. And I would love to see as part of this process for the Elks Club that we look at the zoning down on, uh, on Route 2 and make sure that there's the possibility of uh, growing those kinds of support services that are needed. Thanks, John. Dee Dee. Um, thank you. Um, I, I really, really appreciate that last point of John Snell's about the um, additional resources, particularly if we're talking about a lot of housing in that area. A um, couple things. Um, the activity at the current rec field versus the new Elks Club, there must be some ability to integrate some of those things that are being envisioned for the Elks Club at the current rec field. Um, there are spaces, uh, not, not for everything, but for some of the activities that are being envisioned. So I'd like to throw that out. Um, and I also wonder if, I don't know what the city is envisioning for the rec center on Berry Street, whether that's usable for anything or nothing. And I'd like to think it's usable for something that might take some uh, space requirements off of the Elks Club. And finally, um, Many people have talked about the natural resources. Well, uh, uh, for the natural for the Elk Club, and I, I would like to suggest that the more uses that we add to the Elk Club, the fewer natural resources and wildlife will survive. And I don't think it's um, realistic to think that we can do all of those uses and also protect all of that natural resource and resources and wildlife. Thank you. Thank you so much. And clearly you're pointing to that need of having a comprehensive look at those different resources and how they work together and um, point well made. Thank you. Uh, Giovanna um, and then Susan. We haven't mentioned the educational opportunities of this property. And uh, I do wanna put it in the bucket list that I wanna make sure we include educators in planning our projects. There's forests out there, there's wildlife, there's potential historic resources, archeological resources. Um, I wanna include the North Branch Nature Center as a strong potential partner because they have uh, fewer acres than, than, than this property is and there might be some great synergy. I hate that word, but 
uh, collaboration between them. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanna. Susan, and then Lucinda. I also, I kind of got into this conversation before the vote with a concern about property taxes. And I think that we need to look at a balance of how this property, you know, what does this property generate? Does it generate more expenses or does it generate any revenues to the city and how does that work? Because I think we're gonna have to be cognizant of some of us hitting a point where we don't have as much income to spend on property taxes. So I, I think looking at it in terms of revenue neutrality, maybe, I don't know. I just think not, it's something we need to really consider. Yeah, thank you. Not just net zero, but revenue neutral or better. Uh, Lucinda, Lucinda McLeod and then Sean uh, Sheehan. Hi, um, I really appreciate the comments about us looking at all our recreational facilities and deciding what should go where. Mm -hmm. I mean, I too would love to see something happen at the rec center and it would be a perfect spot for an indoor pool. <laughs> they could <laughs> duck the outside and put the pool right there. And, and when I mentioned the skate park, um, we have sort of a pretty crappy one over um, off the rec field that isn't maintained well and is nothing compared to other communities. But, you know, that would be fine. You know, it's just we need to look at everything together. At the same time, we really need to be better about what we do because it's pretty sad. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucinda. Sean Sheehan. Thank you. I'll be quicker this time, I promise. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think thinking about all the parks linking together, I know this is kind of way down the road, visioning probably master plan because of all the private property between, but thinking about the way Hubbard Park and North Branch and everything link together and think about how you have the roads and the bike path, Town Hill to the, to the north and Route 2 and the, the bike path to the south, kind of that north quarter across, um, you know, having the potential um, as, as something I think about. And, and I think on top of that would just be um, thinking about the impact of wildlife you know, across the, across the county when we don't build um, in Montpelier, you know, the impact that has when people can't move into Montpelier and impact wildlife and the surrounding. Yeah, towns. very cool thought. Um, uh, let's come back to it, Sean, and share it as a point of vision in a second, if you would. Um, I'm going to let Jake go, and then we're going to turn a corner again. We got one more piece of work to do before we go. Jake. Thanks, Bob. Um, my question is, um, it's about the role of the hub. Um, and I'm wondering if the city could um, post any documents that they have um, that describe relationship. Um, and I ask because um, I noticed at the beginning of the meeting that um, Bill reported um, about five um, interests that uh, city people had from a survey from a couple of years ago. Um, and then the hubs, um, what their interests were, were five different things. And so um, thinking about like, you know, ultimately, who's going to shape, um, you know, what happens on the property in terms of recreation. So, um, yeah, to summarize, um, basically, if the city has any descriptions about their relationship with the hub and any agreements that, you know, have been signed, um, it'd be Put that up. to have those publicly available. Yeah, those should be publicly available. Okay, good, good point, thank you. So let, let's turn a corner now, and uh, Mayor Watson will have a minute to, to share some closing reflections at the end, but we have about 15 minutes. And what we'd like to do is this exercise where many of the things that you had to say about ideas, like if you had a vision for what this land was 20 years from now, or what could be accomplished, um, and you could put it in one sentence, um, and we're not writing a final vision tonight for the future of, of this parcel, but we could take a 
a bunch of these sentences and actually kind of use them as points of a poll to see if other people agreed with them. Part of our, our idea is to reach out more broadly, as people have said, in a much more inclusive way to other people in the community around the thoughts that could be prioritized tonight. But also maybe there's some pure sentences that we could put together in just a few minutes for something that we would like to see as essential to the future of this property. And Sean was sort of linking towards one, um, but who would like to raise their hand and be courageous and be the first person to say, my vision for the future of this property includes blank, or I see a future for this land where blank. And I'm gonna start with you, Callie. Okay, taking a risk. Um, I guess my vision would be this project overall becomes a model um, for integrating the human and non-human or natural environment. Thank you. Other points of vision for this project. Nancy. You're still muted, Nancy. Yeah, you thank you. Thank you. What a great process. The future, I hope that our future generations are grateful for what we did with this resource. Great. Thank you. Re no, regardless of what the current needs for individuals were to meet the needs of climate change and everything coming before us. Okay, thank you. Other, other one sentence descriptions of a part of the vision for this property in the future. I see a future where, um, Audrey, Audrey Fomet, did you raise your hand? There you go. Yes, I hope we can um, go forward with um, uh, an affordable for the um, future um, for recreation and uh, housing and anything we see uh, for the future but it must be affordable for this really small town. It's not a city, we're a mm -hmm. small town, <laughs> you know, with a median income of $45,000. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Amanda, a, a one sentence point for a vision. And then Elizabeth will be next. You're muted, Amanda. <laughs> Uh, all that br brilliant articulation you we were muted through. We still can't hear you. <laughs> there you are. No. Amanda, you're on the in the far left hand corner when you scroll down, you'll see a microphone that you click on. I'm gonna go to Elizabeth Parker until I see you clicked on it. Elizabeth? I just done. There we go. Um, go ahead. So um, I vision that uh, we uh, have uh, I really assessed the uh, capabilities uh, and uh, uh, potential of the property itself, and cited uh, housing and other uh, uses for the proper property as is appropriate to its capacity. Okay, thank you. Other points of vision. Amanda, you're off mute. Oh, yay. Go for okay. it. It's not in my left-hand corner. It doesn't matter. Um, I just envision a place where it is affordable for, for people to live here. Okay. It is um, very unaffordable. And yes. The rec center is great, you know, tourism is great. I think we should be focusing on the people that live here and what they need. Okay, thank you so much. 
anyone else have a vision for the future of this site? And it can be it can be anything from how we work together as a community to get there to how it fits with everything else we want to see for the future. Kathy, do you have a point of vision? And then Susan. So this land, this unceded land that was stewarded by Abenaki for generations upon generation becomes a source of inspiration, strong community, homegrown food, accessible and, and uh, affordable homes, recreation, and deeply respectful interactions between the people who live in Go there, the land, and all living beings. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Not right off the top of your head. That was well done. Uh, Susan, your vision. I envision a livable neighborhood of people of varying backgrounds surrounded by land well stewarded and a place where people can lead healthy and happy lives. Thank you so much, Susan. Gretchen. I envision ending up somewhere that we got to through an inclusive process where we build a common vision. And so we, we all as a community share that vision um, and work together to get there. Thank you so much. Fran Dodd. I envision a place where that which is built for recreation and housing is done in such a way that it will not be dilapidated and become unaffordable in the future. Okay, thank you. Sean Sheehan. I, uh, yeah, I see a, I see a future where uh, people who wanna live um, in central Vermont can find a place to live within the city limits if they so wish and um, can have walkable access to community recreation and nature. Thank you so much. Anyone else have a point of vision that they would want to have included? We, we've often done this where we built it like a scorecard and we actually have people review the scorecard and see which points they agree with in the future as part of a process like this, and then ultimately add them together as a, something of a consensus statement. Is there anything else that we're missing that ought to be part of such a vision? Okay, I'm not seeing anything. Um, and so I think we've got, you know, I listened to this and this is probably the 500th community meeting I've managed in the last 20 years. It's been rich. Um, I hear a lot of depth and of passion around different aspects of this place, uh, a tremendous opportunity. We all know that there are um, people who um, won't afford the facilities, won't afford housing, won't be able to access or be included in this unless we work diligently to ensure that and that that's part of our the agenda of our times. And um, we also know that this is gonna be an exercise in democracy and that democracy in the world is being tested and that we're all online as members of a community to stand up and participate to the best ability we have to make the best community possible for the future. So in that, um, I'm very grateful to each of you for participating, for putting the power of your own ideas into this mix. Um, I encourage everyone to be engaged, to be participant, to work with the city and, and um, help to push things forward that are essential to doing this right. So um, it's been great to be part of this process and I'm gonna turn it to um, Mayor Watson to share her reflections to conclude the, the evening. Mayor. Thank you, Paul. Uh, and I, again, I wanna thank all of you for being here, for sticking it out to the end. Uh, I really appreciate all of your thoughts. And um, I, I uh, can speak for myself here and say that I heard some ideas that I had not considered and I, that I think are really valuable. And uh, I'm really grateful that people took the time to share those thoughts. Uh, and I, this is also um, possibly the, the largest uh, meeting I, I, I 
we've had, I mean, at, at our highest point, I think I saw we had 155 participants and that is just uh, remarkable. Uh, and I would, again, also encourage everybody to stay engaged and uh, participating in this process. And I'm looking forward to the next steps where we can uh, have more information and start to um, uh, prioritize the things that we've heard and uh, uh, make some decisions. So thank you again to everybody. And I think that uh, is it. So unless there's anything further you want to say, Paul, um, uh, I'm, uh, I guess I'll say uh, good night to everybody. <laughs> I guess we would just say we'll be in touch. We'll be sharing information on the meeting through uh, Front Porch Forum and elsewhere. And um, and there'll be opportunities to reflect and respond to the information on the table. And then meanwhile, if you do have an idea that comes to you at two in the morning and you wanna make sure it's not forgotten, you can email msmith at montpelier-vt.org. That's msmith at montpelier-vt.org. But I think everyone pointed to the need for surveying and there'll be opportunities to lay your ideas in there. and. Uh, Meanwhile, thanks to the city folks that put this together and to the scribe who's going to have to pull it all together uh, on paper in the next day or so. Um, in, enjoy the evening, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you doing this.